Welcome to another video and in this week we're checking out the big Swede. This is the Volvo XC90 T8 Recharge. It's a plug-in hybrid and that's two cars in two weeks that have been big premium SUVs that are plug-in hybrids. If you missed my last one, it was the Range Rover Sports, you can go check it out now. Otherwise, stick around, this is going to be a good one. Yep, another week, another big premium luxury SUV that's a plug-in hybrid. This is the Volvo XC90 and this video is brought to you by Naked Insurance which we'll chat about a little bit later. But for now, let's chat Volvo. And I must say that this Volvo XC90 has exceeded my expectations when it comes to comfort, drive quality, practicality, and performance in general. Volvo has this huge perception about being one of the safest cars on the road. Now, fortunately, I haven't been able to experience that because I have a need to be safe or to get saved by any reason. So I'm glad about that, but it's good to know that if you are driving a Volvo, there is that perception but at the same time, it is a very safe car, but I'll get to that. Now, as I mentioned, this is a big premium SUV, and with a big premium SUV comes a big premium price. Now, this one that I'm in particularly is the top of the range. It costs 1.8 million Rand. Now, yeah, that's a lot of money, but if I had to compare it to the Range Rover Sport plug-in hybrid, that's a million Rand more. Now, if I had to start picking on differences, yes, the Range Rover is a little bit faster um, and it's got a renowned presence about it being a Range Rover and this lap of luxury that you're sitting in. But this Volvo is not very far off from that. Yes, it's not as technically advanced and as beautiful to look at from the inside, but it's just as comfortable, it's just as premium and plush, and it's just as good to look at from the outside. But if you really do love the Volvo XC90 and you can't afford 1.7, 1.8 million Rand for a version like this, then you can get into one from 1.3 million because that's where the range starts from. Then from an engine point of view, so what's actually under the hood, is a 2 litre 4 cylinder supercharged engine. Yeah. And it puts out 233 kilowatts and 400 newton meters of torque. Now just from a standalone 2 litre 4 cylinder engine, that's a lot of power. You see that from a lot of the hot hatches and other performance vehicles. So to have that under the hood of this car, that's pretty impressive. But the main difference is that it's plug-in hybrid. So you do have all of that electricity that's going to bolster that power to 340 kilowatts and 709 newton meters of torque. Yeah, that's a lot. That's an additional 107 kilowatts and 309 newton meters just from the electric system alone. And then speaking about that electric power, this is a plug-in hybrid, so you do have a battery and electric motor setup, and that battery is good for about 19 kilowatt hours. That's speaking about the size of it and what it can hold in terms of energy. Now, that energy will then convert to about 55 kilometers of range that you can drive on pure electric only, which is not too bad. Um, Volvo do claim about 77 kilometers of range. I haven't been able to get that higher range out of it, and I have recharged this battery full about three times. But some of us don't have the at-home charging solutions and aren't able to always go out and plug it in at the office or at shopping centers. So I have had a few instances now where I've run out of battery. So I've been running on the engine only and I must, I'm actually quite impressed with the fuel economy. Now I've been driving this car really nicely. I haven't been throwing it around and asking a lot of it. And like now, I'm getting about 4.9 liters per 100 Ks. For a car of this size, off of a two liter four cylinder trying to lug it around, I don't think that that's too bad at all. But I was very impressed with my first drive in this car where I did take it from my office all the way home. It was about a 12 kilometer drive or 12 kilometer stint. And I averaged 0 0.8 liters per 100 Ks. I was pretty chuffed. And then taking a quick look at the design of the car, 
from the outside it's very familiar it's xc90 you know the styling because this shape has been around for quite a while now but i do think that it stood the test of time it's aged very very well and they have been able to update some of the cosmetics and aesthetics of it from the bumpers um, to the side skirts and adding in the gloss black elements so it looks pretty badass and especially with these big wheels and this beautiful paint job i absolutely love this gray that they've got here which i'll put down on screen as to what it's called because i've completely forgotten it right now <laughs> but it looks luxurious it looks premium it looks sporty even though it's not really but people don't know the amount of power that you've got hiding underneath here so they might be surprised when you take them on at a robot or traffic light depending from where you're watching this video sorry and i love the way that the headlights are immediately identified as a volvo they're in the shape of thor's hammer and if you didn't know he's one of those nordic gods so that's from the area of sweden and it's in the shape of his hammer so if you didn't know that now you do and then taking a look at the inside of this volvo xc90 and remember how i said this car's been around for a while well on the inside that's where you're going to kind of see that immediately because and for me specifically it's just from the layout of the dash and it's not very modern you can see that this dash design has been around you've got this vertical infotainment down here in the middle which doesn't have a lot of functionality it's really just like an ipad mini if i can call it that but just in terms of how it's integrated the shape the dash and all of that it does look a little bit old in terms of what's going around in this category at the moment i mean look at that range rover sport yeah that's years and decades ahead of this volvo but where it does look really good is from the driver's point of view so here you've got a really beautiful volvo steering wheel it's very simple it's comfortable it's thick enough it feels great in your hands but the best part here is you do have this digital driver's display in front of you and just like the infotainment you can't do a lot with it all you can really see are your maps your speed the power if you're using electric energy if you're using fuel that sort of thing there's not a lot of functionality you can't really change the themes and things like that which isn't a bad thing because it does keep things uncomplicated and pretty easy to use and just ahead of that you do have a heads up display so yeah from the driver's point of view i really do like this xc90 and then another one of the standouts of this interior for me is this top of the range bowers and wilkins audio system there are so many speakers in here i haven't even been able to find all of them no but let me tell you that this is an oral experience people hate that word but it is it's an oral experience in here you've got sound coming at you from everywhere you can hear everything and the bass inside here is also so good it's not obnoxiously loud but i think the way that the audio has integrated into the the depth of those bass levels i think it's really really good you need to hear this but otherwise it's got all of the luxury touches and premium features that you expect from an expensive premium SUV like this from the soft touch materials to the leather wrapped dashboards the full leather interior that is so soft and supple it feels like you're sitting inside of a lounge that's how good it is these seats are adjustable in every way that you can think of they're also heated i would have liked for them to be ventilated on a hot day but unfortunately they're not the climate control is built into the infotainment but you don't really have quick access to it unfortunately but down in the center here you do have some quick access buttons in terms of your volume your next track your window demisters and things like that but another cool feature is that you see there's a cubby hole or a glove box well there's no button to get into it that's because there isn't one <laughs> um, it took a while but i did figure out that it is down here in this little button cluster that i was showing you so if you click it that's how you're going to open up the glove box the practicality is also pretty good in here you've got some nice covers that cover the storage where you can put your drinks and where you can charge your phone wirelessly and if a phone is too big to fit into this wireless charger you can move this top section up a little bit too which reveals another 12 volt socket but also gives you a chance to fit in your bigger phone because not all phones are the same size you've got a really unique start button in the car here that you just turn in one direction to start it it's almost like a mini key so there's no push button and then just above that you've got the volvo specific very beautiful glass gear selector which feels cool it feels luxury it just reminds you that you're sitting in this big luxurious swedish suv i really like that 
And then for your passengers in the rear, the comfort levels continue as good as what they are up here in front. They've got legroom for days. They've also got adjustability in their seats. They've also got their own air conditioner in the back there, which they can adjust for each side, which is really great. They've also got their own USBs as well as sunshades. So in case they need to hide from people or block out the sun, which is its main intention, they can do that and they can do it quite easily. It's very, very easy to use. And then not only do we have people in the back, but we've also got people in the back in the back. Yeah, this is a seven seater. And once you are able to pop those seats up and figure out how to do it, I only tried it for the first time when I was filming this. So as I was trying it, you're able to see how I figured it out as I went along. I can't say I looked that glamorous doing it, but I did eventually figure it out. And the space back there is okay. It's big enough for the kids or for very small people, but not for someone my size. And then looking at the boot, and when the seats are down and flat, you have a huge cavity back there. It is enormous. You can fit almost anything you want to. Maybe even a small car like a little Bajaj. Maybe. Maybe I should try that. <laughs> but yeah, as you can see, the floorboard also lifts up. So that acts as a bit of a separator. So when you go and do your shopping, you are able to split things up so that you don't have your small little bit of shopping floating around that whole big boot, which I think is also a really good touch. And you can do that in the Range Rover Sport too. And then just below the boot floor, you are also able to find your cables to charge the car. You've got one cable there, which you can use to charge at home through a three point socket, which is gonna take you a very long time. So best you plan it because it's gonna take overnight probably up to about 12 hours or so. Um, but there was also a second cable, which is gonna be for your AC charging at charge stations. Or if you go to the mall, or if you go to a dealership, you can plug that one in, and that'll probably take about three to four hours. Yeah, so go do a lot of shopping. And then something that really adds to the comfort levels of how well this car drives is the air suspension. Now, it's not sporty in any sense, but I think it is so well composed and it handles the bumps and speed humps in a way that I've never felt in a car before. Um, another cool thing there is that you are able to actually adjust the level of the air suspension. So if you go into the drive settings here and you go into the more aggressive drive mode, there you'll see that the car will lower itself. But then if you go into off-road mode, where you'll then be able to access this car's four-wheel drive system, the car will also raise itself, which is pretty cool. Then if you go back into hybrid, that's just the standard driving style. You'll see the car will level itself back to its normal stance. And then naked insurance. But before I chat about them, I want to chat about the importance of insurance in general. Now, people find it to be a very grudge purchase, and I get that. It sucks to pay, but it's really, really important. Now, let's say if you don't have insurance and you get into an accident, not only are you going to have to fit the bill for repairing your car, but you're also going to be responsible for having to fix and repair the other car. Now, they're going to come after you to have to pay that money. And where are you going to get that money from? Exactly. Who knows? But then there's also understanding excess. Now, excess is something that you pay when you get into an accident or if you need to claim. That's what you pay so that insurance will then pay out. But the higher your excess is, the lower your premiums are. So it's important to find a good balance that you can afford where if you get into an accident, you can pay the excess, but you can also afford to pay your insurance per month. So if you can find that balance, you'll find yourself to be in a pretty healthy financial situation. So yes, the higher your premium, the lower the excess, or the lower the excess, the higher the premium, just to get that across. <laughs> and then onto Naked Insurance and what makes them so cool. Now, for me, it's the fact that you can get a quote from them between 90 seconds and two minutes. That's how quick you can get a quote from them. So if you're doing shopping around, you don't have to go there, put your details in, wait half a day to phone you, you'll get it that quickly. And the cool thing about them is that they're not going to phone you back. So no one's going to spam you. You're not going to get insurance phone calls bugging you, pressuring you to take their quote or anything like that. With Naked, you get the quote, you move on, or you accept it, and you move on to Naked. And my best feature about Naked Insurance is the fact that you can pause your cover. So if you're going on holiday and you're leaving one of your main cars behind and it's sitting there not being used, but you're paying your insurance on it every month, essentially wasting money because you're not using the car, you can pause the cover for the duration that you're going on holiday. And you can save like 50% of your premiums. Now that's money that you can use on your holiday or just to spoil yourself. So if you're interested in going to go check out Naked Insurance and put what I've said to the test, then go do that. 
Go check out the link below in my description and go and see if you can prove me wrong. You won't be able to. And then onto the GDR test. Should you get the car, should you drive the car, or should you remove it from the list of cars that you're looking at? Now, I definitely say, go and get this car. I think this Volvo is worth all of the money that they're asking for it. Yes, 1.8 million Rand is a lot of money, but I think that you're getting a lot of car for what you're paying. You're getting air suspension, you're getting a plug-in hybrid system, you're able to drive on pure electric energy alone, you're getting this beautiful leather interior, panoramic sunroof, Bowers & Wilkins audio system, digital displays, off-road modes, four-wheel drive, seven seats, the list goes on and on. And if you're in the market for a Volvo or an XC90 or an XC60 or anything like that, then go check one out on changecars.co.za. They're a website that sells new and used cars, but the best thing about them is that they vet every single dealership that sells cars on their websites. They don't let any dealership just come and sell cars. They don't let those fly-by-nights come here to try and muck you guys around and to send you on a wild goose chase and to take advantage of you. That doesn't happen at Change Cars because Change Cars prides themselves on excellence in service and the value that they provide to people buying cars. They understand that buying a car is a huge investment and a big decision for people. So they try and make that process as easy as possible. And if you buy a car through Change Cars, they'll even guide you through the whole process of buying a car from beginning till the end. Their website is also a hub for everything automotive. So you can watch car reviews, you can read articles, you can even go and see what car you can afford per month. Like, if you don't know much about cars, you can put in your budgets and they will suggest the best car for you at the price that you can afford. That's pretty cool. So thanks for watching another review. I hope you enjoyed this review of the Volvo XC90. And if you did, please will you drop a like below. And if you want to see more videos like this and other car reviews, then make sure you subscribe. And until then, I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.